This is a Uyghur hat decorated with hami embroidery. This is a children's cap with embroidery in the style of ethnic minorities in southwestern China. Both were made by women. From daily necessities to objects of beauty, the passage of time has seen needlecraft develop into an art. These exquisite works symbolize the efforts made by generations of women. Kursu is a kind of silk fabric made by the interweaving of weft and warp. More importantly, it's also a traditional Chinese craft that results in the creation of precious artworks. In the Northern Song Dynasty, it was used only for weaving royal garments. Later, it was used to copy classic calligraphy works and paintings. Kursu is so intricately woven, the copies are often more beautiful than the original works. There is a saying that an inch of kursu is worth an inch of gold. Tan Shui Er is making a scroll of peonies. She has been working on it for more than five months. It takes a whole day to complete just a few centimeters of kursu. For more complicated and elaborate patterns, Tan Shui Er can only finish two centimeters in one day. Shuttles of different specifications, tapestry beaters of various sizes, and a loom make up the equipment needed to weave kursu. Like other textiles, kursu is also woven on the basis of warp and weft. This weaver is making shoe brocade, which is considered one of the most complicated handicrafts. The pre-designed patterns and colors are made by jacquard weaving. Its precise and intricate designs and colors give the impression that it was designed by a computer. Cursor, however, is made in a completely different way. The warp runs through the entire work while the weft is only interwined with the warp where the patterns are created, rather than covering the whole piece. The warp serves as the foundation while the weft creates colors and patterns. Cursor brings interweaving of the warp and weft into full play. This is also the craft's most distinctive feature. Copying renowned calligraphy works and paintings not only requires a high level of skill, but also calls for an understanding of art. Chinese painting is divided into realistic painting and freehand brushwork. The former stresses technique, while the latter is focused more on abstract beauty, which are both aspects that are not easily displayed through cursor. <laughs> This is one of the paintings of Emperor Hui Zong of the Song Dynasty. It is neither a copy nor an embroidered work, but a masterpiece woven by Tan Shui Er on a loom. It took her five years to complete. In 1956, to carry forward Cursur, the Suzhou Embroidery Research Institute recruited a group of young women to learn the craft. A photographer from China Pictorial took this picture of Tan Shui Er, who was a 17-year-old apprentice at the time. The majority of artworks she took part in making between the ages of 17 and 55 have been given to political figures of many states as national presents. After retiring, Tan Shui Er has focused more on her own tastes, 
and integrates her own artistic ideas into her works. This is a freehand brushwork which Tan Shui Er is copying. In the original, the peonies are drawn with color powders according to Chinese ink wash techniques. For Kasur artwork, the most challenging part is the transition between dark and light colors. The color variations in one stroke have to be broken up into numerous units, like countless colored pixels being woven in bit by bit. For example, Tan Shui Er now uses 23 kinds of pink colors for the peonies, while other weavers usually use just eight. The two sides of a finished cursor product have exactly the same patterns. Under the light, the patterns seem like they have been carved on, which is why cursor is also known as carved silk. It has been six months since Tan Shui Er began weaving the peonies. With the warp cut, this freehand brushwork style work is almost finished. When the thread residues are clipped, two identical patterns on the front and back emerge. This cursor work is more than a copy of the original painting. It is a work of art in its own right. Having devoted herself to the craft for almost five decades, Tan Shui Er is still committed to exploring the limits of Kursur. Though she works at her loom in her home, the artistic goals she pursues go far beyond this little space. Women are able to achieve their best in the process of perfecting their workmanship while expressing the beauty from deep within their souls. In 2016, the China International Patchwork Invitational Contest was held here. In 1983, China joined the International Color Association, and this was the second time it held the contest. Patchwork is a craft that involves piecing small pieces of fabric together and has a long history. It began with women piecing together odd bits of cloth into clothes, bedsheets and other daily necessities, but gradually evolved into an art form. <laughs> the judges for the contest all wear a patchwork flower on their chest. The decorations are all made by Jin Yuan Shan, a master of colors whose artworks are famous in the international community and represent the highest level of needlework in China. These are some of the works she created.
Jin Yuan Shan lives in Archung District, Harbin City. The vendors in the morning market have always been curious about her. She doesn't just come here to buy groceries. She also collects the waste that the vendors throw away. Sometimes she stares at the goods for a long time but doesn't ask about the price. Jinyuan Shan's sensitivity to colors comes from her family. Her grandmother was proficient at needlecraft, and her mother was a professional tailor. In her childhood, she played with leftover bits of cloth at home. This package from South Korea contains silk scraps discarded by a high-end tailor. She uses them as raw materials for her patchwork. She is very particular about the colors of these leftover scraps. If she can't find a satisfying color, she will dye the cloth. These grains in the sifter are husks of broom corn, which have a reddish dark brown color. It is the first time Jin Yuan Shan is using broom corn husks as a dye. The ideal color is dictated by her mood. Jin Yuan Shan believes that how she feels decides the outcome. Now the gauze takes on a reddish brown tone. Her positive attitude gives it a natural and bright touch. Jin Yuan Shan will combine it with some brightly colored bits of cloth to break the monotonous visual effect. She gives the finished patchwork screen to her son as a gift to decorate his new home. Today, Jin Yuan Shan and her students are going to complete a work for the exhibition at the 2016 China International Patchwork Invitational Contest. Though it is not yet complete, she has already decided to name it Flowers in Bloom. It is a design she has been thinking about for 10 years. It is midnight. Jin Yuan Shan and her students are still working on the flowers in bloom. The students are unaware that the colors and patterns are a reflection of Jin Yuan Shan's feelings from a family reunion on Chinese New Year's Eve. Jin Yuan Shan's sensitivity to life allows her to turn scraps of leftover cloth into blossoming flowers. When the work is complete, Jin Yuan Shan takes half a day off. Jin Yuan Shan's Flowers in Bloom is hung at the entrance of the exhibition hall and immediately causes a sensation. After seeing it, a Canadian expert makes some surprising remarks. 
加拿大的新布艺术家，他说的这个作品肯定得精神病做的。不是这个执着的精神，断的，这么大的作品做不出来。完了，他就赚钱就眼泪啊，紧紧的握着我的手。他哭啊，我也掉眼泪，翻译也掉眼泪。说，他说的，我能看到你一生的喜怒哀乐，都在这个作品上。不，你得把那字，把那字这样扣起来，往下对。总归像那谁大堂那手呢？总总归往下点，再往下点，你们。哎呦，哎呀，太美了。Together, needle and thread can create works of unique ingenuity. It all comes from women's consummate needlecraft skills and their keen perception. The features of southern China can be seen everywhere in Suzhou. The city has a network of land and water routes, as well as exquisite, elegant, and well-arranged classical architecture. A microcosm of ancient China lies behind each wall. When Yao Jianping is in Suzhou, she spends every evening embroidering. Sometimes she doesn't work. And just comes for some peace and quiet. The artwork behind her is called "A Man of Noble Character," depicting bamboo shadows in the sunset. It is a piece of Suzhou embroidery created by Yao Jianping. Suzhou is from the ancient Han Dynasty. The craftsmanship is beautiful, simple, and the design is high art. This should be in line with Suzhou culture. Suzhou embroidery has a history of over 2,000 years. The passing on of this craftsmanship through generations is inseparable from the city's landscapes. Suzhou embroidery is deeply influenced by the traditional Chinese spirit of humanity, just like the city's classical gardens. Both Suzhou's embroidery and its classical gardens are crucial parts of Chinese art. Shen Shou, a mastery of Suzhou embroidery, has had a huge influence on Yao Jianping. Shen Shou was a famous embroiderer in the early 20th century. Through her verbal instructions, a book recording the techniques and patterns she used in her works was born. It was the first book on embroidery techniques in China's history and the first summary of 18 commonly used stitches. Shen Shou is very famous. 在平真绣的基础，运用了光源这个概念，研究这个思理、方向、配色方法，所以呢，称为叫仿真绣。他那个年代之前是平面的，就没有立体的。而到了沈树，他就是把这个光线运用到了针法里边去。Yao Jianping's creations incorporate more artistic elements while carrying forward the traditions of Suzhou embroidery. Light and shadow, lines, picture composition, structure, colors, and other artistic elements are perfectly combined with embroidery. With the progress of time, the needle is used as a pen to create ever more challenging artworks. This is one part of a large set of Suzhou embroidery works called the Silk Road that Yao Jianping began working on a few years ago. This part is entitled "Heading West Out of Chang'an." For a long time, Yao Jianping had wanted to use embroidery to recreate historical events. Suzhou Road, two thousand years of history. So our Suzhou, it is two thousand years of history. 这个构思，内心来讲特别想去表达，诗和刺绣，通过“一带一路”把这些历史的事件，以及到当今的发展。The techniques used to embroider the Silk Road are highly complicated. In addition to portraying the artistic style and colors of the Han Dynasty, 
they also need to combine the characters and historical events in one frame. Facial details play a crucial role. The depiction of characters calls for a high level of skill. Heading west out of Chang'an depicts the story of Zhang Qian being sent to the western regions on a diplomatic mission. The artwork combines various embroidering methods, which Yao Jianping calls integrated stitch. Pinsenshuli The aim of the various stitches is to meet the demands of the time. Suzhou embroidery will continue evolving as techniques for artistic expression improve. The progress of time has turned Suzhou embroidery into an art form, which is a true reflection of the times. <laughs> Women combine their wisdom and talent in craftsmanship. The skills that were once confined to women's boudoirs gradually developed into art forms that were constantly being perfected. In one transformation after another, they have absorbed women's creativity and attained ultimate beauty. It has given women a channel to express their personalities and ideas and pursue ultimate beauty, a responsibility given to them by the times. Liu Ying is a bridge between the Miao villages and the city. Liu Chong Ying has been in the shoemaking industry for over 20 years. Wu Ling Shu wants to introduce blue calico into modern life. Xia Hua has always wanted to present what she sees to more people. Innovation has injected new energy and colors into craft and made it a part of the present day life.